And that's what climate change is about. It is literally, not figuratively, a clear and present danger. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. The ability of CO2 to do the heavy work of creating a climate catastrophe is almost nil at this point. The price of oil has been artificially elevated to the point of insanity. That's not how you power a modern industrial system. The ultimate goal of this renewable energy you know, plan is to reach the exact same point that we're at now. You know who's trying that? Germany. Seven straight days of no wind for Germany. Uh, their factories are shutting down. They really do act like weather didn't happen prior to like 1910. Today is Friday. That's right. It is Friday and it's time for Climate Change Roundtable number 85. And we're going to talk about some crazy stuff today. Crazy climate news of the week crazy climate videos, and we're going to slice and dice some of those videos with some facts. We have our regular panel, Dr. H. Sterling Burnett, Director of Heartland's Arthur B. Robinson Center on Climate and Environmental Policy, and we also have Linnea Lucan, Research Fellow at the Heartland Institute. I'd like to give you guys kind of an opportunity, since we haven't done this before, to kind of talk about what you do, because, you know, I don't think we've ever broached that subject on the show. So ladies first, Linnea? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, I do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, my biggest project right now is working on a series of uh, short papers on energy sources um, that you can find at energyataglance.com. So that's mostly what I've been doing is research and writing articles for climate realism, um, producing some videos based on my energy series, all of that good stuff, trying to educate people about energy and um, climate topics. Although I'm not a meteorologist, uh, my background is in engineering and in geology. Um, I, I, I know how to read research papers, so that <laughs> turns out to be useful. Um, so I, I just do the best I can. Cool, thanks, Linnea. Uh, Sterling, other than mounting trophies on your wall, what do you do? <laughs> well, uh, gosh, uh, as the director of the Robinson Center, I wear many hats. You know, I oversee the daily uh, updates of uh, climate realism. Um, I write a weekly report. It's actually about three times a month called Climate Change Weekly. Uh, that usually has a lead essay by me on a climate topic and then summarizes some of the recent science or economics uh, surrounding climate change studies and reports. Um, I also uh, wrangle YouTube folks and, and uh, keep, keep uh, Anthony's feet to the fire on, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, on uh, climate at a glance and, and Linnea's on energy at a glance and uh, trying to get our And we seem to have lost Sterling. He's gone into a static state. Climate is not. Back. Yeah, there climate. Go. Climate is not. Climate is not the only thing we do here at Heartland, even in the Robinson Center. So uh, we also update, you know, maintain uh, environment and climate news in the Heartland Daily News. Uh, we cover endangered species issues. I've been working a lot uh, with a group of people on uh, offshore wind in the Northeast and how it's impacting the endangered North Atlantic right whale, which evidently the Biden administration doesn't care if wind turbines kill whales, just so long as oil derricks aren't killing them. Uh, oil right. derricks have been there for 40 years and haven't killed any of them. But wind turbines uh, are being built there now and whales are washing up on shore and somehow they get away with it. So, I mean, uh, a lot of a lot of projects all the time on different topics. Cool. Cool. Thank you. What I do, uh, other than host a show, is I write books and reports like Climate at a Glance. If you haven't gotten a copy of this book yet, you really need to go and get one. That's available on Amazon, and it's only $9.95, and basically that just covers the cost of printing the darn thing. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of uh, nice little rebuttal things in it. The other thing I do, and this is the most important job, is I cash all the big oil checks. That's right, and I put them <laughs> in my account. <laughs> That's that's what I do, according to everyone. I just cash big oil checks and spew this information. That's, that's all I do here. Anyway, and he shares none of it with Linnea or myself. I'm very <laughs> <upset about laughs> <that>. No. 
All right, let's kick off the show as we usually do, alerting you to some of the craziest climate stories of the week. And we have so many to choose from, as usual. This has to be literally the worst climate paper ever. First of all, the thing is a scam. The title is a scam. They call it the 2023 State of the Climate Report. Now, this is a ripoff of the title of the regular State of the Climate Report done by NOAA every year. But this is published in a bioscience journal. And these clowns decided, hey, let's rip off this title. And, you know, because we all know that biologists are, are expert climatologists, right? Right? Yeah, they know everything about climatology and meteorology, you know? So they're making this, this paper. And there is this one section in it where it, it's just absolutely uh, right there at the top, right there at the top, that first paragraph, so we can magnify that. It says, and then life on the planet is under siege. We're now in uncharted territory. And further on, they say, we call for a transformation of the global economy to prioritize human well-being and to provide a more equitable distribution of resources, citing another paper. We also call to stabilize and gradually decrease the human population with gender justice, whatever the hell that is, through voluntary family planning and supporting women's and girls' educations and rights, which reduces fertility rates and raises the standard of living. This is supposedly a climate science paper and the state of the climate in 2023, the first thing they do is editorialize about population control and gender equality. Mm -hmm. What a giant load of garbage. Now, I want to show you one other thing before we talk about it. That we have a, uh, a screen cap, a picture from inside of this. This is one of the things they put in this. This is a peer-reviewed climate science paper, right? So they take news pictures and say, untold human suffering in pictures. Ugh. Wow, it's just literally the worst piece of junk I've ever seen posing. You know, it, it, it's literally political advocacy advocacy disguised as peer-reviewed climate science. And yeah. if they had done this paper in the 60s or 70s, they could have shown similar pictures of starving people from Ethiopia and Africa and uh, 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 people freezing to death, you know, in Mongolia. And they could have said... Uh, Nearly the same thing, except not blaming it on climate. They would have said, we need a green uh, agricultural revolution, which, would, of course, we got. Um, we did. Instead, you know, it's, it's, well, this is not a biology paper. Biology is science. This is a, an extended editorial. Biologists have no uh, calling for gender equity or... Um, uh, environmental justice, whatever the the things that the the, the 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 popular woke terms they were using, and population control, those are normative. That is a, a moral claim, and biologists have no specialization in morality. That that has nothing to do with science. You can't jump from here are facts about the world, which they don't present much of, uh, and, and certainly don't tie it to climate change. To and this is what we ought to do. That's called the fact value gap. They left right over it. Um, this is this is not science, and honestly, it's not good uh, moral or, or ethics. It's it's unethical. They 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 want. They say they're helping human well being, and how do they do that? Well, let's get rid of some people. That's the first thing. Let's boost human well being by getting rid of people. Uh, that's uh, you know that's right. To be clear. That's right out of the Chinese Communist Party's playbook, right? They've been doing that for, for 30 or 40 years now uh, to control human population. Theirs isn't so voluntary. Uh, they call this voluntary. What if people don't volunteer? What if women want to have babies? Yep. So, Linnea, there are some issues in this paper that are discussed for supposed gender equality. Any comments on that? Oh, I've got a lot of comments on that, but we don't have time today. <laughs> <laughs> what does it have to do with well biology? played, Linnea? Well played. Oh, it's yeah, no, it's just you know the way that they phrase the very careful choice of words in terms of 
you know, saying like gender equality and all that stuff uh, brings to mind some other contemporary, you know, other popular culture wars things. And it's very telling that they seem to be implying or, or bringing in the, um, it seems to be that they're calling to the transgender stuff to me. This is how I read that anyway, um, in saying that that's going to help them with population control. And wow. I mean, if that's, if that's a, a thought out part of this, then we are, we're dealing with a whole different animal than what we thought we were dealing with before. Yeah. Yeah, it, this paper is something else. And it's getting press coverage, you know, as usual. Some of the idiot reporters out there that can't figure out what real science versus fake science or political science is or are publishing on this. But in the meantime, meanwhile, while fools like this are publishing these cruddy papers in bioscience, some actual data from the IEA World Energy Outlook came out this week. And this is from the Carbon Brief website. You know, they're a reliably alarmist. But this graph is really interesting. They say global CO2 emissions could peak as soon as 2023, according to the IEA data. So what happens to the climate crisis? What happens to the need for gender equality? What happens for the assault on the planet? What happens to all that if CO2 emissions start going down? Well, it'll be really an interesting test because what happens if they predict this and CO2 emissions actually do start going down, which is doubtful because China and India are out there doing their thing. They're spewing out CO2 as fast as they can. But what, what's this going to mean for the future? It's going to put them in kind of a, a set the cat amongst the pigeons, as Steve McIntyre used to say. Well, I don't know what happens, but I wouldn't even call this science. These are projections. It's 2023 yeah. now, folks. We're not down. But even if we peaked, that doesn't show peak. That shows a decline. Peaking is flatlining. If they, if 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 what they claim is right about climate change, a flatline does the planet no good. Emissions this high will put us over the tipping point and and put us over 1.5. We've got to go down, down, down. And so, uh, this is fantasy. Global CO two emissions peaking. While China says that they're not going to peak until 2030 or 2035 at the minimum, while India says we're not even trying to peak right now, this is wish fulfillment. Well, I and, figured we would and, fight and, bad science with bad science here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you look at their other documents, if you look at their other documents where they talk about uh, energy use, which is, remember, this is what the international energy agency is supposed to be doing is, is talking about energy use, not CO2 emissions. Um, they show that fossil fuels continue to be used and grown well into the 2050s. So if that's the case, if their own data estimates that, how do we reach this peak? Magic. It's, it's magic. We still get, if I knew all along that we could still use fossil fuels and peak CO2, uh, you know, I, let's have a party. <laughs> nothing, nothing the business as usual still saves us because co2 peaks despite still using fossil fuels but that's what their other reports show so this is i don't know where they got this crap yeah it's 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 funny stuff i mean they they don't have a clue what they're doing none of these folks these projections are just like you say wishful thinking it's, but um, it's not even a projection it, it is 2023 they're saying now it's peaked it's 2023 now i know I know. We'll, uh, we'll review this graph at some point in the future, you know, in 2024 on one of our shows. All right. Next topic. Now, we've predicted this a long time ago. And, you know, every time we show one of those EVs spontaneously catching fire, if it gets a little salt water on it or it gets too hot, this article in the Irish Sun says that EVs are becoming in uninsurable due to the cost of battery repair and so forth and so on. Yes, that's right. You may not be able to get insurance for your EV very soon. So then what do you do? Park it? Pay the payments anyway? Seems like that's going to be the future for some EV owners if you can't get insurance. Yeah, you can't drive, at least in the United States. I can't speak for England, but in the United States, if you can't get insure, if you can't insure your vehicle, if it's not insured, you better not be driving and get a ticket. 
Yeah, I expect um, that this will be a turning point for the Biden administration. They will step in and provide a low cost EV insurance program, right? Right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. a low cost health insurance program they've got that's boosted yeah. rates all over. Oh, you're Don't probably imagine. right. <laughs> that's just a terrible thing to think about, but you're almost certainly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. This is from the Norway Statistics Bureau. You know, they're about hard numbers. And they say... Oh, wait, wait. Before we move on, could we talk about that Irish report? Because what it talks sure, about let's is... let's back up. Look, let's, it, what it talks about is this. Uh, when it's they perfect. get small damage, small damage, because they can't be sure that the battery pack hasn't been breached in some way. Insurers are being forced to write off almost brand new vehicles uh, in a small accident. The cost... The repair costs are 25% and more higher for comparable damage to an EV vehicle. The places that have to store them, the repair shops, uh, Britain's passed a law that is soon they will have to store them 50 feet from any other vehicle and from structures because of the, the chance of combustion. This is adding hundreds of billions of pounds in cost to the handling of electric vehicles. You know, they're burning up on ships. If I'm a ship insurer, I don't want EVs on my ship. Nope. Um, they're burning up in houses. So if I'm a home insurer, I don't want them parked in the garage charging. If you've got a scooter, don't park it out in front of my house and charge it. Uh, so it's, these are the un- the unconsidered consequences of a policy saying this is the new technology, not because markets chose it, but because government said this is the way to go. Yeah, I could see a bumper sticker for this. My other car does not spontaneously combust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Linnea, thoughts? Or just you, uh, you can just express disgust if you'd like. That works as well. Yeah, the... <laughs> Yeah, the the EV stuff is not my um, my biggest wheelhouse, uh, but from what I have heard, I've heard of many people who got an EV, especially the pickup trucks, because I thought it sounded cool and interesting and fun, and then they almost immediately got rid of them uh, because it was either too expensive or they didn't have anywhere near the range that they were told that they would have. So, well, you know, uh, you don't want an EV if you live near a coast where there are hurricanes. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want an EV if you live out in the, in the arid north, in the arid west, not because salt water might damage the batteries and they catch fire, but because there are no charging stations. And, uh, it turns out they don't work very well in extreme heat or extreme cold as the state of Wyoming has all the coal in the world. They have oil and gas, but because the Biden administration is handing out billions of dollars, let's. Let's make a deal behind door number one. Billions of dollars if you buy electric buses. And so Laramie, Wyoming buys electric buses, eight of them. They don't work. People are stranded because the buses can't show up. And the company that the Biden administration subsidized with billions of dollars declared bankruptcy. And so they're left with these eight buses that don't function. They don't have replacement buses. They're going to have to get them. And suddenly the legislators say, ooh, well, maybe we should get natural gas buses. Wyoming has natural gas. Ooh, maybe we should, you know, it's like idiots. Idiots run this country. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enough on self-combusting electric cars and insurance. So uh, this is the next article that is raising a lot of interest. Uh, someone's got a phone that keeps beeping in the background. Please mute your phone. Statistics Norway researchers cast doubt on the CO2 hypothesis. Uh, this is an interesting article because they've gone in and statistically look at this. And they're basically saying it's, uh, and this is a preliminary version of a research paper. It's called a discussion paper. They, uh, claim that climate research operates with too short of a time interval to be able to determine whether the influence of carbon dioxide and temperatures has a real statistical correlation. Other factors such as cloud formation, solar activity, and ocean currents have a significant impact, the researchers claim. And this is exactly what Dr. Judith Curry has said 
you know, that climate is, is really complex. It's a wicked problem. There's all these other factors, and these folks that are concentrating on CO2 are just ignoring, you know, the rest of the planet and its processes, so to speak. Right. Well, and I just covered on climate realism, it'll go up on Monday, I think, um, a story that covered a study showing uh, that Antarctica, it's basically that, you know, it's too late. Antarctica is going to melt and we're all doomed kind of a thing. Um, the actual paper itself had a lot more nuance than the quotes that the researchers gave to CNN. The researchers were basically saying, we've lost control of Antarctic ice melt as if we ever had control over that in the first mm -hmm. place. Uh, but they also admit that they only used one climate model and they only used one ocean temperature ice melt relationship model for their entire study to determine that, you know, we're doomed. Um, they, they admitted that, you know, maybe increased snowfall in the center of the continent could offset the sea level rise due to ice melt. Um, and it's, but they, they fully admit that they did not take into account any of the complex uh, atmospheric conditions down there. Antarctica is a weird continent. You know, it's got, you know, it's polar. It has bizarre wind patterns. Um, it has subsurface volcanoes on the very side of Antarctica that's seeing all the melt. And they don't take any of that into account. They just say, um, we're going to say that water is going to get warmer because of climate change and therefore ice will melt more. And yeah. there's our, there's basically the, the, you know, overview of what the study says. Well, that's yeah. no surprise. That sounds right. Sure. Except that we don't <laughs> live on a planet with only those conditions. <laughs> well, and also, and also there's no real reason for believing water is going to sustain the warmth. What we know is we've had an influx of warm water from currents the past couple of years. You know, these large scale ocean patterns have a tendency to shift and have had a tendency to, to shift regularly throughout history, bringing warmer and cold water. But what what doesn't or what isn't changing or hasn't changed for a while now is that Antarctica is growing ice. It's adding ice to the largest portion of the continent. Temperatures haven't changed that much. And we don't control the volcanoes under the West Antarctic ice sheet of the peninsula. And uh, that tends to not only melt ice from the bottom, uh, where it's, there, it's already heated under pressure, but it, it melts the water around it. Uh, Darn those no. volcanoes. We need a volcano tax. That'll fix them. Uh, there I'm you go. Well, laughing at Jim's comments. We've lost uh, control over the orbit <laughs> of the moon. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. But getting back to that Norway paper, I want to talk about why that's important. So they went back and they, they this is an official government agency. This, this is not, there's no way it can be portrayed as in the pocket of industry or climate skeptics or deniers. This is Norway Statistics Agency. It's been around since the 1870s. Norway tasked them. Tell us what we can say about CO2 and climate change. They went out, they ran some uh, statistical analysis. A lot of climate researchers, by the way, don't know much about statistics. That, that, that's, that's one big problem. Yeah, that's the whole reason for the hockey stick, the man's faulty centered PCA and the way that it turns everything into a hockey stick, no yeah. matter what data you feed into it. So these guys actually know about statistics and they said, look, we've looked back at history. We look at the present. Climate change has never tracked CO2 concentrations very well. A lot of other factors going on. Don't seem to be tracking it very well now. Remember, we've had two pauses one of them for 15 years of temperature flatlining, even though CO2 emissions continue to go up. They say they're just, the evidence that CO2 is driving present climate change is insufficient or lacking. There's a lot of other factors to consider, and they meld better when you look back at history with changes then. Now, that's important. It's not getting the coverage it deserves because it goes against the narrative. Um, but this isn't a fringe group, folks. This is, this is, uh, I think this is as good a science you can get it. And it also sort of confirms recent peer reviewed study by, uh, Christie and Spencer 
out of University of Alabama and Huntsville that say, look, we've looked at the climate models. We all know the climate models run too hot. What would a climate model that doesn't have, uh, uh, you know, all the, the, the problematic feedbacks and things and take energy conservation into account look like? And it comes in at the low end of the scale, uh, not a disaster. They say that's what the projection is of it for a doubling of CO2 is like 1.9 degrees uh, above 1.5, which we're already passing, but below uh, 2.0. And that's if all of it is due to CO2, which they said, I mean, he explicitly says that. And that's if everything's due to CO2. If natural factors play any role at all, uh, then CO2 is not even having that impact. So um, there is a... A, a body of data, growing body of data, of research, that is just, if the media would listen, if politicians would listen, they don't have to follow the science, but they should listen to the science. And if they would do that, they'd become a lot less alarmed and maybe people, you know, young kids wouldn't be having psychological problems because we wouldn't be scaring them with lies every day. Right. Well said, Thrilling. Um you know what would be really great is if this gets worldwide press, but it probably won't because it's against the climate narrative. All right, so we're going to go start now with some of our way out climate alarmist videos and debunk some of them. The always reliable AOC a couple of weeks ago was at a climate rally in New York. And this is what she had to say. Watch. I'm honored to be here today shoulder to shoulder with you all because we are all here for the same purpose to protect the planet, the people, and make sure that we end fossil fuels across the globe. This issue is, is one of the issues, the biggest issue of our time, and because of that, we must be too big and too radical to ignore. We will not give up, and that is what we are here to do today, to tell our leaders from President to the, all of our elected officials that we demand to change. It will happen now. It begins today. It is occurring today. And it's because of you. Yes. Okay. So let's say, let's magically imagine that a fossil fuels rapture occurred today. And all of a sudden, everything made with fossil fuels would disappear. Gosh, what would happen? Well, she would have been standing naked on. Exactly. Yes. Is that rayon you're wearing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Neither and, would know, the banner behind her. Neither would all the tennis shoes that these people are wearing on their feet. Um, yeah. it's, so, it's idiotic. Yeah, it is. It is. And so we have this list here. Uh, of all of the things, and this is just 144 out of 6,000 items, and there's even more than that. I mean, just look at all the stuff that would disappear if we had a fossil fuel rapture today and all the fossil fuel manufactured stuff just magically disappeared from the planet and we never used it anymore. We would be back in the Stone Age. There would be chaos. There would be untold human suffering. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know... The, the the biology guys that wrote that earlier paper would get their wish. Population would shrink pretty quickly. Um, Including them, probably. It, well, no. Yeah, look, AOC was standing in the middle of Manhattan, right, uh, giving this speech. And all those people were standing in the middle of Manhattan, these protesters. Well, during a rapture, you know, if you read the Bible, we're called up. We're, we're taken. All the steel in all those buildings goes. Because it was made with coal. The concrete produced too. emissions Natural. and concrete. So all the remaining stuff, it would if it doesn't have fossil fuels, it rains down upon them, crushing them under the weight. <laughs> yeah. I just as a, a little nuance to this, though. I mean, I think the point that they would make or that they would bring up with in response to that is, well, we're not saying that we want to get rid of everything that we've already made. We already have that stuff. There's no reason to continue in the evil fossil fuel use that we have now because we already have everything we need. Well, the problem is that's not true either. <laughs> um, you cannot produce things like steel 
or things like um, fiberglass in the quantities that you need to put together the renewable infrastructure that they want. It's the concrete. you just can't. Yeah, the, the concrete wires, is the a huge wires, portion the of that. that it has to be mined. And, and and what they also don't realize is that a lot of these materials aren't just made. You don't take crude oil and and turn it directly into these products. A lot of this stuff is created as a byproduct of producing gasoline. Um, it's if you stop producing gasoline, you stop getting the byproducts, and that's just the end of it. Yeah. Let's be I guess we can. I guess we can make gasoline and then just put it back in the ground. <laughs> I don't know how that would work, but or we could just send it to the moon or something. I'm not sure, but or I guess to the moon. To the moon. Uh, as Jim sure. Lakely pointed out earlier, we've lost control of the orbit of the moon too. So yeah, right. We can't get there. So to be honest, these people don't put much thought in, into what they're saying. She didn't think about this. She has no concept. It, it, it makes a nice political speech, right? She looks very fiery up there. Uh, you know, um, I recall demagogues in other countries making very fiery speeches that were based on lies and that were based on misinformation and that were uninformed. Uh, my wife's from one of those countries where these guys make these speeches, how they're going to uh, uh, save the people through authoritarianism. Big government's here to help you. Um, but uh, I don't, I, I honestly don't know. I think, Many of these people believe this in their heart of hearts, um, but they don't understand what it would mean for them. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly enough, she's standing in front of a banner that says fossil fuels kill, mm -hmm. right? The lack mm -hmm. of fossil fuels would kill and pretty darn quick. Pretty fossil darn fuels have quick. saved have, have saved billions of lives. I mean, you know, all the plastics in our hospitals, all the energy that they provide to keep machinery running, to keep refrigeration going, to, to do all that. There's not a hospital. There's not a single hospital in the world that runs on wind and solar. No, it, does, it doesn't exist. They don't have, and they've got, guess what? Backup diesel generators or natural gas generators for when the power goes out. You That's know, right. they don't have backup solar panels. <laughs> Sorry, we can't operate. It's dark. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Your medicine thought out and your uh, and your uh, your uh, the machine that helps you breathe. Sorry, your uh, you know, you can't breathe anymore because the power went out. Uh, but the sun, it, it's nighttime and the sun doesn't shine. They yeah. are fools. That indeed. All right. Speaking of fools, we have another one. Uh, we've got another video here. This one. This guy has 7.5 million followers on YouTube. And he's, you know, because he's all about science. He's Mr. Science. And he's telling us all about climate change. So we're going to watch this and we'll stop the video at a particular time to talk about some of the comments he made. But this particular video is just chock full of inaccuracies. And it, it's difficult to watch if you're a factual based person like we are. But we're going to try to get through it without. You know, no, the right. video, but wait, before you start the video itself, he's got 7.5 million followers. The video itself, this one climate video, over a million views. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes, it, he's marketing to the gullible, basically. So here we are. Let's roll it and hold our nose. All right. Today, I'm going to give it to you straight about climate change. Perhaps you've heard of it, like on TV or something. At this point, I think we're all pretty much at saturation on climate change. The past 10 years, it's been all day and all night on the news. Climate change is a global warming trend. Climate change. Global warming. Climatic changes. Climate change. Climate change is real. Climate change is coming to blow up your house and eat your dog. So basically, I'm not going to be needing that anymore, and I'm not going to be needing that. But what does it even mean? And what does what it means mean? And should you even care? Uh, yeah, you should care. I realize that climate change is one of those things that some people don't believe in. Specifically, there are people who challenge the widely held belief that it's getting hot in here, which I think was firmly established by Nelly in 2002, just before he requested that we take off all our clothes. And that 
Unfortunately, it turns out to not be a particularly effective strategy to combat global warming. Fun, though. Actually, some of the deniers agree that it's getting warmer. They just disagree that the cause is the way that we, as humans, live our lives. Which is understandable, I guess, because who wants to believe that their actions are hurting other people in the world and other generations as well? You know, besides stop right rational... There. stop right there. All right, so how much is this guy hurting the world by the fact that he's producing videos that are being watched by millions of people? How much electricity powered by fossil fuels is used to allow people to view this silly video? Yeah. You think about that. Uh, yeah, the, you're talking emissions there, and 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 uh, then he's got his plastic glasses with, it, I suspect, his plastic lenses. Um, and it's not just this video; it's all his videos. He's very popular. So, but also he even made it. So he's already made his first. I, I don't. I wouldn't call this a lie. I just call it a mistaken claim. He said these other people admit it's getting hot. But we're just not the deniers. Cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, well, hold it, hold it, hold it. They don't say it's not. It's not the case that we just admit that people like myself admit that it's getting hot. It's it's warmed, on average. I think the global average temperature is a made up statistic, in fact. Of but has has the planet on average warmed? Okay, uh, it has modestly. What we also say is not just that we're not causing it. We, I think, most of us admit that we could be a small contributing factor, but we don't know whether it's the majority of it caused by us. And we certainly see no evidence, which he doesn't say, that this small warming is disaster, which is the implication that he's given us already. Well, of course, it has to be a disaster. Otherwise, it's not marketable, right? Well, otherwise, who uh, cares? Oh, well, it's a little warmer today. Yeah. And here Fonk. he's got, you know, rational responsible adult people if you don't believe in this you're not rational or responsible right yeah just like aoc you know th this kind of video is the same kind of rhetoric that aoc is pushing it's all about emotion so far we have not seen any science in this size show it's all opinion Responsible adult people who want to do the right thing if at all possible and what are we doing that's so wrong well in the immortal words of one of my heroes, Nancy Sinatra, we've been messing where we shouldn't have been a messin'. So we release uh, massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere by burning coal and gas and oil and jet fuel. And we also really like to destroy natural carbon sinks like the Amazon rainforest. And then in the place of those rainforests, we like to put other things that produce greenhouse gases, like cattle. And here's the kicker. The Earth has seen these massive increases in carbon dioxide concentrations in our atmosphere in the past, and every time, it's been a complete disaster. What Whoa, scientists can't right completely there. agree Where? on is- Where? Where has been the, the complete disaster in the past? Did all life on Earth stop? No. Did the animals die in mass? No. You know, the, the last time there was a mass extinction, I think there was a giant uh, meteor or a comet involved that hit out around the Yucatan Peninsula that wiped out the dinosaurs. There has that, been no, yeah. nothing in the past related to carbon dioxide or warmer temperatures that have caused a mass extinction that I know of. Yeah, no, there, there hasn't been. And, you know, the Yucatan thing, in fact, blocked out the sun, which is what caused the extinction. The, the, the ice came and reptiles don't good, do good in cold temperatures. So um, the dinosaurs went the way of the dinosaurs. And um, when he talks about that, he says every time there's been higher CO2. No, we've had CO2 much higher in the past and life has thrived. Now, it, always, it hasn't always matched warmer temperatures. It turns out warmer temperatures throughout history have typically been the leading factor that the Earth warms and then CO2 starts to rise. But um, the point is, there's never been a time where just because of higher CO2, it's been a disaster and life on Earth was disrupted. That hadn't been the case. Yeah. You know... Um... You're our resident geologist, Linnea. What do you think about, you know, the fact that supposedly it's been a disaster in the past? Uh, like Sterling said, uh, carbon dioxide, according to the proxies that we have, now you have to be careful with a lot of that data because, you know, we obviously don't have direct temperament, or uh, I cannot talk today, uh, temperature or carbon dioxide measurements from um, 
you know, millions of years ago, tens of millions of years ago. Uh, but they have been decoupled on several occasions from the data that we do have. So it's not clear that it's a direct, um, you know, relationship throughout, you know, long geologic history. Now, this isn't something that's going to, you know, hurt you if over the course of millions of years, there's a dramatic change. Uh, what they claim now is that it's so rapid now that it's dangerous. But I think there's a pretty good question about that as well. But that's not what he said. No. What he said was, every time it's been higher in the past. Yeah, which is just it false. Was disaster. Just and that's just Fact check false. false. Yeah. That's just false. It is. And it is. to one point you just made, if it changes over long periods of time in one direction, it is a disaster. In the middle of the last ice age, carbon dioxide emissions, based on proxy data, reached about 180 parts per million. 30 parts per million more, 150, and photo and plants can no longer undergo photosynthesis. Right. And when there's no photosynthesis, we die. They die. Everything depends on them dies. And that's everything except for I right. don't know, everything I don't know, on the earth is dependent on so, photosynthesis. So there is one change in carbon dioxide over long periods of time that could be deadly to us. And that's the loss of carbon dioxide. Right. Okay. So let's continue. Scenario is going to get to us first. Or, you know, I guess they could all, all of them happen all at once. Like, there's always that. One thing they are agreeing on, not zombies. So we're safe from that. So here are the five scariest things that could happen or probably are already happening because of climate change. So the number five scariest thing about climate change Everything is just getting so confused up in here. So people talk about global warming, they're basically talking about the fact that over the last hundred years or so, the average temperature of the Earth has increased by about a degree and a half Fahrenheit. And most of that increase has happened in the last 30 years or so. So here's how you should be thinking of the Earth. Right it's, it's a beautiful... Stop right there. A degree and a half Fahrenheit. Oh no. Gosh. How much does the temperature change on a daily basis? What's the diurnal variation of the day? 30 degrees in some places, 40 degrees in others. How much does it change from season to season? How much does it change when you fly from New York to Miami or um, Fairbanks, Alaska to San Diego? Gosh, how could we possibly withstand such a drastic change in temperature? When you go, when you retire, do you typically, do people typically move to Fargo, North Dakota, oh, no, or no. Miami no, Beach, Florida? Siberia, Siberia. Yeah, that's Siberia, Siberia, that. Siberia, or, uh, uh, or do they go to Miami Beach and, uh, you know, someplace in San Diego? The, the, the uh, and, and, but even his claim that most of the, the temperature rise has been in the last 30 years is a lie. Yeah. Look, and. The statistics show that a, a significant proportion of the temperature rise happened before 1950. And then some of it started after 1970, which is 50 years ago. He's talking just since 1990. That's just false. Yeah. Once again, it's not a mistake if you're saying something that you've got a chart that says that's wrong. That's a lie. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Thinking of the earth. It's, it's a beautiful precisely calibrated and self-regulating machine. And it's more complex and amazing than we will ever be able to understand. Seriously, you guys, right about it's a freaking masterpiece. But let's say that a terribly intelligent group of animals on its surface starts to drastically alter the composition of its atmosphere. In that case, I mean, like all those elegant and beautiful self-regulating systems <laughs> There is no start to go all system. screwy stuff that seems totally inconsequential, like rain falling a few weeks later than it otherwise would can affect when the streams are full, which changes when the plants bloom, which changes when the insects hatch. And that could affect historically synchronized pollinization of crops and fish spawns and bird migrations and water supplies for drinking and irrigation. What we're seeing now with just over a degree difference in the temperature of the earth is significantly affecting our weather already. Some places are flooding, some places you know, are experiencing record droughts, we're here. seeing ice caps hold, melting. Hold on a second here. I'm gonna connect my Nest, my nest uh, thermostat right now, and I'm gonna bring the temperature in my room up a degree and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, but- We're flooding, you know, some places are duration. Once again, there he, there he goes. Oh, there's flooding. Well, there's always been flooding. Ah, uh, there's droughts. Uh, there's always been droughts. 
you know, the, the point is, look at trends. Look at trends, son. You're, he's, I don't know how old this guy is, but younger than me. Uh, but he has no sense of history, and I don't think he cares. No, uh, this, is, this is not about science. This is all an opinion piece. You know, there's so far he hasn't displayed one thing of science. He's just been displaying opinion. And, you know, if you go to climate at a glance dot com, all the points that this guy is making, every one of them is debunked in climate at a glance with facts, figures, data, as opposed to just, you know, opinion. Let's, you know, everything about to think the bees are going to die or whatever. I'm slowly coming to the realization for a lot of these kind of pop science people that they think an average is actually what's supposed to happen and that an average isn't made up of highs and lows deviations yeah. from average. I, 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 if this guy runs that, a science channel. Yeah. Yeah. No, if, if they believe that, then uh, I guess our teachers in schools are not failing when the average for the class is a C. Uh, we don't want C's, folks. We want A's and B's. Uh, C may be the average, but that's because there's a lot of people with D's and F's dragging it down. And But in addition, you know, you say it's opinion. Sadly, it's not even his own opinion. He's just rehashing the opinion of others and presenting it in a, you know, a sort of lively uh, format with nice little graphics and uh, catchy uh, appearance. Uh, you know, he's, he's a showman, but he's, he's showing other people's opinions that aren't grounded in, in facts. Yeah. All right. Let's roll the rest of this. Irrigation. What we're seeing now with just over a degree difference in the temperature of the earth is significantly affecting our weather already. Some places are flooding. Some places are experiencing record droughts. We're seeing ice caps melting and the historic ranges of animals and plants either shrinking or expanding. I mean, check it out. In the past 10 years, they've actually had to change the little maps on the back of seed packets oh, to tell no. you when to plant Geography cucumbers. Expected. The worldwide redistribution of growing conditions and fresh water. Because, you know, you have air conditioning. And so it's not too big of a deal if the world gets super hot. But you know who doesn't have air conditioning? Cucumbers and cows and other stuff that we like to eat. Those things have to be outside. That's how they work. And so they care if suddenly everything gets super hot and dry. And right okay, now, a lot a of the wealth and a lot of the people right. in the world. I don't remember a time anywhere where cucumbers actually cared. Does, does anyone know if cucumbers have feelings? I've seen some <laughs> cartoons where they express opinions. But I'm not sure they've ever expressed them about climate change. Maybe he's got that in his video. Yeah. Well, they're distributed. Yeah. But also, even that, though, what did he just say? They care if it's warmer and, and drier, except that the evidence suggests, and who says this? The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that conditions will actually be wetter. Give that man a gold star. Miles Schumacher says he is doing the same thing that our government and our media is doing, going to extremes with no context or data. And that's the stuff we fight every day on climaterealism.com. That's why we do what we do. In the places right. where there's really good growing conditions. And as the earth continues to warm, places with historically really amazing growing conditions like central California could become lifeless hellscapes. And that would be a perfect habitat for zombies, but not so good for cabbages and strawberries. And by the time we reach something as subtle as a three degree increase in global temperatures, which scientists say could happen as soon as 2100, Saskatchewan could be the next central California. And all of the fertile crescents of the world may stop bringing forth their marvelous bounty. And what always comes along with poor growing conditions in drought? Well, you get famine, and you also get his brother horsemen, war. In case you didn't hear, back in October, the human population hit seven billion people, and every single one of them wants to eat food. And when people get really hungry, they start to hurl little hunks of metal through each other's bodies, which is one of my least favorite recreational activities of humans. So famine's pretty scary, and so is number three, which is That's displacement when, and when mass extinction. war a recreational activity? What the hell? It's a oh, joke. But, and the idea that war is anywhere has been driven by hunger. Uh, you know, yeah. I, for, I, for, I forget. I forget. Uh, but let's see. Is, is a, are the Hamas and the Israelis fighting because they're hungry and not getting yeah. enough food? Ukraine is the breadbasket of of uh, part of Europe. It, it provides wheat to the world. So they, the, the Russians were hungry and they invaded Ukraine. 
start hurling pieces of metal recreationally. Um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 Hitler was just misunderstood. World War II was all about food. Napoleon, Alexander, it was all because we were hungry. Come War on. of Pharaoh against the Israelites. That was yeah. all about food, right? Oh. Yeah. No, it's yeah. about slavery. But before we get to this next one, number three, I just want to point out, he's got the picture of the polar bears up there, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the polar bears are the poster children for climate change. Well, bottom line is, is that there are more polar bears than ever now. And you can look at this on climateataglance.com. There's more polar bears than ever. They're thriving. And in fact, there's so many polar bears, places like Churchill uh, in Canada, now have to work on programs to keep them out of town because they're all over the place. They're getting in the garbage cans and everything else. You know, it just, it, it's out of control, the polar bears in some places. But yeah, apparently one thing climate if, change is killing them, right? It's one thing if those little black bears are coming into your garbage and stuff and getting into your garage or your cabin or whatever. It's a whole other animal when it's a polar bear. <laughs> well, and you know, they, they say, oh, well, polar bears are having to forage farther for food because of climate change. No, it's because there's so damn many polar bears. There's a lot of competition now. And so when they say, well, we've never seen so many people eaten by polar bears. Well, that's because polar bears are showing up in more places where there are people. In part, to be fair, we've expanded communities where polar bears are. So to some extent, we've expanded to their range. But the point is, there's more bears. More yeah. bears and more people in the same place means more conflict, folks. But it doesn't mean dying polar bears. Unless yeah. they're getting and the caption it's got here, which is displacement and mass extinction due to sea level rise. Mm. Where? Show me one mass extinction due to sea level rise. Where? Well, you know, all those all those land dwelling animals that don't know to walk away from rising seas over 30 years. Snails, maybe. No, not snails <laughs> even know. Yeah, you can't go with tortoises because, well, turtles, uh, tortoises, you know, thrive. Uh -huh. Most of them fly in the sea. Even Let, even the uh, tortoise, you know, even the turtle in the uh, in the uh, yeah. commercial for the the nuts can probably yeah. get away from rising seas. Yeah. Let's see if we can get through the rest of this. At least to his, his next two points. Due to sea level rise, so you've probably heard of this one because it affects all the cool kids like polar bears and people who live in Brooklyn. So it's getting hotter, right? And all that precious fresh water that's locked up in the polar ice caps is melting. So like right now, as I'm all eating this hot pocket, I love hot pockets. Have I told you I love hot pockets? There's some polar ice cap melting. And now, it just keeps happening. Oh, thank God. That's good. This is why they fake eat in television shows. But screw that. So there's enough water locked up in the ice on our planet that if it all melted, we'd pretty much all be in some serious trouble. Here in the US, we can expect to see New Orleans underwater. Uh, parts of the Bay Area, a lot of New York City, but worldwide, it's actually looking a lot worse than that. Entire island nations like the Philippines and Indonesia would lose all of their fresh water supplies, and it's possible that they would need to be entirely evacuated within this century. Many of the largest really? countries in the world, like Bangladesh, Vietnam, India, and China, all have very high populations living in very low-lying urban areas. And all of that is to say nothing of the diverse and vital ecosystems that could be completely destroyed in the event of a large magnitude sea level rise. Though I I think Miami would make a pretty sweet artificial reef. I'm sure the octopi would love it. The acidification of the world's oceans. Oh, Basically, okay. carbon dioxide is water soluble, which means that as- All right, first of all, before we get to acid or ocean acidification, the ocean is not becoming acid. Now, this again is at climate at a glance. Go to climateataglance.com and look up ocean acidification. The ocean has a pH, which is alkaline. It's not acidic. Nothing's melting. No animals are dissolving, right? They've made claims about this and none of it's come true. And in fact, they made this claim that the, the ocean has become less alkaline or more acidic since 1850. But they don't even have the data for that. It's a model. It's a computer model. It's based on something that Kevin Drenberth out of NCAR published and a modeled increase in, in or, or decrease in alkalinity towards a more acidic, but it's not even past the neutral point yet. The pH of the ocean is is still above the the neutral point at seven. So th this whole ocean acidification yeah. thing. Let's don't. be clear. It, 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 seven is the neutral point. It's at eight point one, and they think it varies between eight point eight and eight point three, depending on where you get your uh, you know the, the different uh, publications. 
So we're pretty far away, and that's after uh, we're halfway to the doubling of CO2 from pre-industrial levels. Uh, the only where the only place they've actually shown CO2 to be acidifying water is in labs where they put these poor crustaceans <laughs> in tubs and then they pour basically uh, acidic material in there until the water acidifies and melts their shell. And they said, oh, my God. But that's like feeding rats uh, saccharin. 24 hours a day, large doses of saccharin, 24 hours a day, seven days yeah. a week for years. And then they develop cancer and people say, oh, well, saccharin's cancerous. Yeah, that's crustacean abuse, you know. It is. And, and But I'm probably going to have some crustacean abuse later for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> the concentration in our atmosphere goes up. So goes up the concentration in the ocean. So the oceans have a deal with the atmosphere, which is that all the carbon dioxide that the plants on the earth don't want, the ocean will suck it up for plants and animals in the ocean to use. And the animals in the ocean use that carbon dioxide to create their bones and their shells and their pearls and whatever. And then when they die, all that stuff falls to the bottom of the ocean becomes rock. This is great, we're getting rid of carbon dioxide. However, when carbon dioxide dissolves into water, there's a chemical reaction which slightly lowers the pH of that water. And a lower pH means it's more acidic. Water? And it's not a super huge change, but it turns out that a lot of the okay. he said ph but the caption messed it up i think you're right okay i didn't hear it clearly. thank you go ahead Run especially it. the ones at the bottom of the food chain really require a very specific ph so the carbon dioxide gets dissolved in the water the ph goes down just a little bit and guess what it's mass extinction time again which is like a party except with 70 to 90 percent fewer species on the planet i'm sorry are you doing okay i know this episode's been kind of a downer but we've only got one more horrible scary thing to go and that's Ooh. the shutdown of the global conveyor belt so unfortunately i don't have time to get into this topic and all the detail that it deserves but if you want to google it just look up thermohaline circulation the thermohaline circulation is awesome and it's a huge reason why our planet can not only support so much life but also such complexity of life basically all of the yeah. oceans in the world are connected together through this giant conveyor belt this one is one of the biggest loads of junk ever and and our president of the heartland institute james taylor has been tracking this particular claim for years it seems like every other year there's a new paper out the the global haline the, the global thermal haline circulation is going to speed up one year and then two years later, another paper comes out and it's going to slow down. And it's like they flip flop every two years on this topic. They have not yet defined whether it's speeding up or slowing down. There's no evidence of either. And the IPCC does not have anything in their most recent report. The AR6, it says either way, they can't find any signature in it. So what the heck is this guy talking about? It's just rhetoric. Well, I haven't. He says he can't get into it. I'll say this now. If he really believes climate change is uh, harming the conveyor belt, and if he believes it's slowing it down, not speeding it up, um, then it solves. Then it turns out it's a self-regulating system, and it solves itself because the ice sheets will start to grow, taking water out of the oceans. So sea level rise will not be rising; it'll be falling. The, the 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 seas will become less acidic because the water is being drawn up into the ice sheets. Uh, now we'll have a problem. It'll just be a very, very different problem. Uh, actually, a real dangerous problem. Uh, the next ice age. But that uh, is, you know, that's what was the movie a few years ago? Uh, uh, the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, uh, which the better take was South Park's The Day Before the Day After Tomorrow. Um, I recommend everyone go see that because that is the, uh, the the closest truth to climate change, uh, a beaver yeah. dam bursting and flooding e the city. Even the climate alarmists were panning that. Uh, Dr. Gavin Schmidt had a few things to say about the inaccuracy of that movie. And they basically portrayed that the whole conveyor belt shut down in the space of a day. And all of a sudden, you know, we had massive Arctic air masses coming in at minus 100 degrees in New York City and all these kind of crazy things. And, and it, it, of course, it was just all Hollywood and doom, doom porn, which is exactly what this guy is all about. Everything he has described here in these five points is all about doom. You know, I'm surprised he hasn't asked for regular thermometers to have a doom label put on at a certain temperature, you know. Um, it, 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 it's all about doom. And it's no science in this whatsoever. All this guy is doing is fomenting opinion and little else.
And I think that's pretty much all we have time for today. I mean, I, I can't stomach much more of this. I don't know about you guys. Well, Donnie was kind enough to point out to me that uh, my... Uh, Super cringe. In, in my dotage, I didn't realize that the movie came out 20 years ago. I thought it was like, uh, who can keep up with really bad films? Yeah. All right. So that uh, the, our last commenter makes the point. Yes, I've been suffering through this. You know, uh, you want to scream at your TV. So I want to scream at this. Yes, thank you. We are feeling your pain. It, it, but this is the point of this is that there are people that believe this junk. Someone goes out like AOC or this guy and starts talking about these nonsensical doom predictions, you know, and we have to end fossil fuel immediately or else doom is coming. You know, I wish we had his audience. Look, we've got a loyal base of watchers. Uh, we have people that view this after the show is goes, you know, is posted on YouTube. Uh, but he's got a million people. So, folks, you know, I encourage you, and and you're probably thankful that this will be the last thing I say besides bye, is that uh, please share our videos, share the publications that we suggest you check out: Climate Realism, Climate Alliance, Energy Alliance. Uh, you know, if if you like this. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your skeptical kids, the people, skeptical kids that are skeptical of our side. Tell your those that are convinced and then ask them after they viewed these videos, refute it. Show me it's not true with evidence. Um, yep. That's it for me. The way well, I fight I, back is, go ahead, Linnea. Sorry, what I, what I can't help but think is somewhere out there, there are probably cool you know the cool teachers who are showing this video you know this guy's video to yeah. students in their class as they're like you know i don't want to have to write on the board today so i'm just going to play a video there are teachers out there that are showing this there's you know millions of people that are watching this stuff um and it's not just that he's not introducing enough nuance into it it's that he's actively dismissing that there is nuance that there is more to it sure you know there is sea level rise but it's way more complicated than saying sea levels are rising and they are going to drown every city in the united states as we talk about all the time or every city in the united states and in the world as we talk all the time in uh, climate realism if you just look at the sea level rise data that's available um, from noaa's website or from i think the u.s geological survey has data as well uh, you can see that it's wildly variant depending on coastlines even just a few miles from each other. It depends so much on whether or not there's land substance happening or, um, you know, due to groundwater withdrawals or whatever it happens to be. Um, maybe the ground is even raising up as is happening in some places on the West Coast. I mean, it actively at the beginning of the video, he dismissed people who are skeptical of the kind of claims that he makes throughout this thing mm -hmm. and claims that they just don't want to believe that they're having a negative impact on the environment or on the planet. And that's nonsense. Um, it, it takes away a lot of his credibility in, in pretending that he's just, you know, reporting the facts and, you know, and maybe he doesn't mm -hmm. know everything. Um, but his opening uh, disturbs me on this. I yeah. Just, well, yeah I said, what it is, no, Linnea, is climate change is causing less nuance. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna. I said I would. That was gonna be the last. But Linnea, you're always so kind. You're you, you, truly. You're always like lack of nuance. That's not his problem. He tells lies. It's 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 not it's not the case that he says sea levels are rising, and, and they were rising before, and they'll rise. You know, no. He says humans are causing sea level rise. Humans are causing drought. Humans are causing flooding. And the data doesn't show it. So that's not a matter of, to, to some extent, that's not a matter of nuance. That's a matter of flat out being wrong. And I think knowingly wrong because you can't, you can't know there were no droughts before and that well, drought and trends haven't least, increased. 
And at the very least, you can't claim that you've read the studies on this stuff, because if you actually read the studies and not just the newspaper articles reporting on the studies, you would see that every single one of these alarmist studies, with the exception of the attribution ones, which are just nonsense and garbage, uh, top and bottom, uh, they tend to have all sorts of hedging language throughout. You know, they talk about how, well, this has happened historically, we can't prove that this stuff is... (laughs) <laughs> we can't <laughs> sorry i'm laughing at jim again Jim, Stop yeah. it. Right. um we oh, can't oh. prove it you know whatever it happens to be i've totally lost my train of thought take us out anthony uh, uh, hopefully in the future we will see linnea unhinged and an angry rant exactly. all right we're looking forward to that all right time for us to go the music's playing climate change is upon us we have to run because you know it's chasing us i want to thank linnea and sterling for being with us today and thanks to all of our viewers for their great comments. I want to remind you to visit climateataglance.com where we debunk this stuff with facts and you can use it as references and it's printable and it's free. Climaterealism.com where we talk about these crazy news stories every day and we debunk those with facts. And energyataglance.com where we have facts about you know green energy and real energy and we talk about that there. So visit those and be sure to speak out against this kind of nonsense write letters to the editors you know tell people climate change is not a crisis yes it's happening but it's not a crisis it's certainly manageable so with that i'm going to say thank you all for joining us i'm anthony watt senior fellow for environment and climate at the heartland institute wishing you all a great day and a fantastic weekend bye-bye